you might know me, Michelle, from RTI's news and programs, in that I'm an avid diver and lover of oceans. I live here in Taiwan and I wanted to give back. So I specifically requested dives where we might be able to help clean up. But what I saw was so much worse than I expected. I've been to various locations in East and Southeast Asia, to countries just barely north or south of Taiwan. I'm so confused. Why are the coasts here in such poor health? So I, with the help from my team at RTI, fell down an information rabbit hole. It only took a quick search to learn that researchers found more than 1,100 metric tons of items polluting Taiwan's coastlines over a 12-year period, which is equivalent to adding 92.5 tons or one Boeing plane of trash to the coast every year, most of it plastic. This was backed up by a Greenpeace survey, which also shows that while Taiwan's total coastline is equal to less than 4% of Japan's and less than 1% of South Korea's, the average volume of marine debris per kilometer in Taiwan is over double that of Japan and more than one and a half times that of South Korea. While it seemed hard to believe, I realized I could also check with the people who had taken me out diving before, who better than the professionals that dive here all the time to ask about the greatest impacts on our coastal health. Was it always like this? Ten 怎麼我們的海裡面到處都是垃圾。那就讓我比較傷心一點,台灣的景象是一靠近魚港,你看下去還是都是都是垃圾。所以這個地方原本也是一個很漂亮的海水浴場也因為國家的建設蓋了我在休息時間我就開始在檢熱室了出了事就要求國培啊就怪政府啊那政府會怎樣
After talking to Ken and Captain Wang, I wanted to speak to a government organization who would have all the facts. I traveled to Kaohsiung to go straight to the source, the Ocean Conservation Administration, or OCA. The OCA, recently founded in 2018, aims to ensure that marine life is provided with a clean, healthy habitat and remains sustainable into the future. Luckily for me, they were very enthusiastic to talk about their viewpoints, data collection, and policy changes. Because we're located in a very uh, unique location, so we do have the huge biodiversity uh, in Taiwan. But now we face uh, similar challenges as other countries like the uh, climate change. And also, particularly in Taiwan, we have the issues related to overfishing and also the human activities and also the development around the coast area. One of the main challenges is because we are downstream. So lots of pollution is from the upstream, like from river, from landside. And the other one is because ocean is hard to see from top. So lots of things you cannot see from top of the ocean. So that's very difficult to let people know we have a huge issues related to the ocean conservation. For the near shore area, we need more funding for the monitoring. You cannot trace where is the pollution coming from. So that's the very hard for us to chase all the different type of pollution. Because Taiwan is really small and we have the fat area pretty narrow on the west coast. Yeah. So once the urban sprawl, then the high development will kind of increase the discharge and then increase the sediment and go into the ocean. That's all the huge challenge for us. In Taiwan's marine environment, what particular kind of pollutant is the biggest problem or you find the most challenging too? Um, I think the most challenging for us is the microplastic and also the nutrient pollution. Once the microplastic go into the ocean, fish eat it and it go into the food chain. So we might be the end to eat it. So that's one thing. And the other one is affect the whole ecosystems. So that's why we think it's very important to control the microplastic. I think the most challenging for Taiwan is the climate change issue. And the other one will be the human activities because Taiwan is really small and we have the high dense population. So we have lots of conflicts for the marine space usage between the marine conservation and the ocean spatial usage. So that's one of the big issues for us. Now we do have two major acts just passed last year. So one is for protection. So we do have the Ocean Protection Act. The other set is for the defense. Marine Pollution Control Act. The highest penalty will be about three million US dollars. So I had some answers, but they didn't answer the entire question. All of Taiwan's problems couldn't be coming from climate change or pollution alone, or I would have seen it in our neighbors as well. Then as I looked through my photos, I remembered something else she said, human activities. In my time living in Taiwan, fish is a prized part of every celebration meal, and people love to wear coral jewelry. Though beautiful, coral jewelry must take a toll on the coastal ecosystems, right? So I called up a specialist on the subject, ready to point fingers and ask tough questions. But what I got was even tougher answers and more questions than before. So precious coral always say the skeletons of some Korean genus have a very long history in a valuable material for religious or decorative purposes. We can trace it back to the Greco-Roman area in the Mediterranean era and until today in Christianity world, especially in Italy, they have a very long history of using and trading coral material with Taiwan. I would say not just about the cultural aspect, Taiwan's precious coral industry is also about the international trade and targeting international market and consumption. So let's say not just mm, domestic use, consumption or culture. The colonies of polyps and larvae of these few species, they grow on the deeper and darker slope of sea mounds beneath the sea water. It's much deeper than the most reef corals we know. So in East Asia, this deep is usually from 80 to 300 meters. Therefore, it has different ecosystems and different habitats and different relationship with other species around it. But the difficulty part is because it's so deep and the environment is deep, dark and steep slopes with strong currents, it's very difficult for scientists to collect data. 
even reaching that part is very difficult. The general picture is that we haven't known enough about precious coral. Scientists, they are still identifying new species from uh, new landings or past specimen. And the lack of knowledge, whether about biology or taxonomy, this is the main obstacle of the conservation of precious coral. We all have an impression that uh, coral, whether it's reef coral or precious coral, they are endangered species and ecosystem and they are critical. We all have this impression and it's very likely to be true. But for policy makers of conservation, impression is not enough. We need solid scientific data to prove that this is not just an impression, but kind of a biological or ecological truth. At least, scientists and Taiwan's current regulation, they prevent the worst possible scenario for both ecosystems and the industry. But what we need is that we have to improve them. We have to make it more scientifically funded, make it more socially just, economically sustainable. We still have to know more about the ocean before we can make better decisions. Although Yushou taught me a lot about the coral industry, I felt even more lost about the cause of Taiwan's poor coastal health. It felt like all of my digging and talking had amounted to was that there was a problem, but no one could tell me what the root problem was. So, to be honest, I have loved and studied the ocean for my entire life. I was so excited to do this topic. But even with all of my experience, I didn't know where to start. None of us did. We kept looking for one problem to solve that would fix all of Taiwan's coastal issues. We even spent one month in pre-production trying to narrow that down. But we realized that's exactly the problem. There isn't just one thing. So I sat down with someone who could help lay out just how interconnected these problems were and what it meant for Taiwan's coasts. Back to Kaohsiung at the Marine National Park's headquarters to meet someone just as passionate as I was about Taiwan's oceans. The few dives that I've had around Taiwan, I've always noticed if I compare them to our neighbors in Okinawa, yeah, or the Philippines, the conditions here in Taiwan are not as pretty. Yes, that's right, because our pretty spot is narrowed down to some place like in Kunding or Penghu. And a lot of our coastline uh, contribute as a factory and a lot of tetra parts, you know, the tetra parts, because we do a lot of engineer working to protect our seashore. So we do have a lot of artificial structures, so we do not have a lot of natural coastline. I think overall, uh, the condition of our coastal ecosystem is not healthy. We do have a lot of problems, pollution and tourism and all these kind of things do some damage to our coastal line. If we take the Xiaoliu Chou as an example, we do have too many tourists there and they bring a lot of waste and seaweed. The biggest problem is about seaweed. We have a lot of seaweed going to the ocean and that seaweed can have a lot of nutrients for the algae. And if we do not have fish or other uh, creatures to eat less algae, and they will cover the coral and coral will die. The infrastructure layer cannot uh, handle all the seaweed, the uh, tourism bring them, and all the polluted water go into the, the ocean. And our corals and our seagrass cannot afford that kind of pollution. So they do have very bad conditions if the capacity is over. There is a very good example about the uh, Mai Liao industrial zone because the Mai Liao is created by the land climation and they put a lot of the sand and dirt into the ocean to create the base for the factory. So that will impact the whole ocean ecosystem and cannot recover forever. And that is very, very big impact. And those kind of uh, activity can make pollution and make something bad for the ocean around that. So that place cannot be uh, used for scuba diving or used for uh, fishery things. Very bad uh, impact for the ocean. I think the policy is enough, but the thing is that we have to watch them and when they do bad things, we can find it. Because a lot of factories put out their pollution water when we have heavy rain <laughs> and we can nobody to check that, so that's a problem. 
for our people here, they might just a little bit aware about of the marine conservation things because we do not understand our ecosystem very much, especially about the ocean. So that is what we have to do, especially in our uh, organizations. We try to create enough knowledge and, and information for our people to understand the ocean and what happened uh, in the ocean and what they have done for the ocean and try to make them more aware about the ocean. I think that is the most important things around this time. Just as I said, people when they go to Xiao Liu Chou to go sightseeing and they do not know their seaweed can damage our coral, they just go to the beach and then play and go home and they don't understand what kind of good things and bad things in that place. The most important thing is about to know it, to know about the ocean and then care about it. Jing Taying's words stuck with me because they mirrored my experience so well. After I started diving, I realized that our oceans, and Taiwan's especially, needed help. It felt overwhelming at first, but I remembered all the little steps I'd started to take along the way, steps others could as well. So we actually we do have the citizen science program, so people can help us to monitoring the water quality, different kind of activities, or even report back to all the observations. Don't let your government or legislators cut the fundings of bureaucratic or scientific data collection. This is the foundation to protect our oceanic environment. All in all, it was a lot like what Wu Taiyi had said. You go, you experience it, and you learn, and then you protect it. We protect what we know. But first, people have to know. If you, you love it, and you will protect it. I think that is our main goal, to make people love it, and they protect it.